Hey guys, Sequoia here from Phoenix Off Grid Solutions. I am standing in front of this 2017 Cirrus truck camper, uh, and I just finished up an off grid power system for this client. Uh, the client came to me with a battery that wasn't working, there was no inverter, there was no solar. Um, the alternator charger was just coming through the, you know, the typical trailer connection. Um, and so they were not able to use it or take it off grid and, and travel or live the lifestyle that they wanted. So they brought it to me and I just finished up installing 400 watts of solar on the roof. We have a 2000 watt inverter. We have a 300 amp hour lithium battery with room for more. Uh, it's basically a complete Victron system except for the battery uh, and the installation went in really seamlessly and really clean. I'm really excited about how this turned out. So uh, I hope you liked the video. We'll do a quick tour of the outside. We'll jump inside. We'll look at the installation of the power system and then we'll jump on the roof and take a look at the uh, solar layout. So thank you. So check out the outside of this rig. We've got a really big bumper, steps, ladders, cool door, fiberglass molding on the top. The decals are a little much for me, but really nice insulated cargo doors really this is the only cargo spot here got a shore connection got two tanks of propane inside those are venting for our refrigerator really nice windows look at that window i've never seen a shape like that big skylight window up top massive window over here in the dinette area down here was where the old lithium battery was. It was like a Valence XP. It was a lithium battery I've never seen before. I don't know if that was the stock battery either, but it definitely wasn't performing well. Um, over here is where I pull all of my electrical connections uh, from that battery compartment. I pulled them back and added a little bus bar here so that we could still have access to them, uh, keep it neat and tidy. Also, this is where our DC-DC connection is coming through, which is a Anderson connector, connector using six gauge wire, which will be able to get plugged in when the camper is mounted on the truck. The client is using a F-350, uh, so it's a pretty beefy truck for a pretty beefy truck camper. Let's take a look inside. So inside here, we have our lids removed from our step and our bench. This is where our battery is located. This is a 300 amp hour Epic battery, lithium battery. Uh, it does have a, a heater inside. It has a Bluetooth connection, which is really nice. And I have room for one more over there. The one more is there because in the future, the client would like to install a 12 volt air conditioner. Currently we have a 120 volt, um, you know, Coleman Mach, which is only able to be used when it's plugged into shore power. Uh, the system was designed around a 12 volt air conditioner uh, being installed at some point or just using, you know, campground connection uh, because this is just a 2000 watt inverter. And so the 2000 watts is not able to run the air conditioner currently, but it does have the pass through capability when it's plugged into a uh, shore connection to run that air conditioner. You hear, hear the uh, inverter you know, humming away because we're charging our battery. Currently, this is where I installed my GX touchscreen. You can see we're charging at about 64 amps. So we're getting close to 100. Uh, this state of charge isn't uh, exactly correct quite yet, but we were at about 75 amps charging just a few minutes ago. So it's starting to taper off. But uh, the power system is located, you know, primarily right here under this step, right behind our stock 120 and 12 volt fuse panel. Uh, and I did integrate all of this stuff into our distribution uh, setup here. We have a 400 amp um, on off switch, main and on, main on off switch. This is a Lynx power in that I um, adapt to accept mega fuses. It saves, you know, 50 or 60 bucks. Um, and uh, we have a Victron smart shunt down there to monitor our current flow. Um, Things are pretty tidy in here as far as a production camper, um, you know, system goes. I and mean, it's still quite a, a mess of wires, but um, overall pretty tidy. Not the worst I've ever seen. Uh, back here we have our 130, uh, 130 MPPT. That's um, 
converting the power from our 400 watts of solar on the roof. All of our wires just pass through the stock chases in this rig, which was really nice to work with. Um, mostly because we have a propane powered Aldi uh, hydronic heater over here. And so the, the big um, heater hoses kind of run all over the place and, uh, and you know, heat this rig. It's a nice, nice style. Uh, our Serbo GX tucked back behind these drawers, our shore connection. I did upgrade the Romex that came out of the shore connection and used a 10-3 uh, anchor stranded uh, marine cable, which goes over to our inverter, our inverter charger. Um, and uh, I also did build a little box that goes over this inverter so that the client can still put some stuff inside without you know risk of spilling or damaging the... Uh, the uh, inverter charger. Tucked away back here is our Orion XS. This is a 50 amp DC DC charger. Um, and it's a, at this time, there's only a non isolated version. The isolated versions of the, a red, the original Orion are nice for a truck camper situation. So, what I did was I just added this bus bar uh, for our negatives. We have our negative coming off the the truck connection off the, the DC DC charger and then uh, a line going back to our distributor. Um, I really like how this touchscreen installation came out. There was a cavity behind the wall here that uh, is accessible behind these drawers, which I was able to utilize and, and cut open and run up fairly easily. I really like how the silver and black looks against the microwave and the refrigerator. Let's see, what other upgrades did I do? Added uh, USB ports here at the bench. And um, also deleted the TV, the TV and entertainment system box, which was right here. You can see where the piano hinge was. Uh, and I removed a lot of wires. I pushed a lot of wires into the wall and there's added another USB port right there to kind of match the USB ports up at the head of the bed. Because other than the ones I installed, that was the only USB port, uh, which is about six feet away. So let's take a look at the roof and uh, check out our solar layout. Here we are on top of the Cirrus truck camper. This is my solar layout with four 100 watt flexible rich solar panels. I like these panels. Um, they seem to be quality. They are flexible, so the lifespan is limited compared to the rigid frame but when you consider height and weight um, that's why I chose them on this truck camper uh, as far as mounting goes I don't use VHB tape or silicone or some sort of adhesive I use actually a 3M dual lock velcro which is quite stiff um, and I use that on my panels it provides a little bit of an air gap underneath for water or heat to move, um, which is usually one of the main issues with these flexible panels. I've even seen pictures of burn spots on roofs from these panels because they get so hot and they're directly on the roof and uh, they can become really inefficient or unsafe that way. So all four of these panels are run in parallel uh, that was not my original intention because um, after I installed these, the client told me that he's going to be installing some sort of roof rack where the feet kind of mount right here and right there. So I had these other two panels uh, as far out as possible to avoid the shadow of this air conditioner. Um, and then I would have two, ser two panels in series and then these two in series, so the two strings in parallel. Uh, but because I had to move these closer into this air conditioner and there would definitely be some shadowing at maybe all times, or at least most of the day, I decided to run all of them in parallel so that if these three were shaded, that one was working. If these two are shaded, those two are working. Um, and it made for a lot of wires and a lot of MC4 connections, but I feel confident that everything is um, tidy and correct. Uh, and strong. Uh, then we have our wires going into our port right in the closet there. And this is some um, uh, Eternabond tape, 
which is really nice to use. You don't have to use any screws. You don't have to bring up any silicone or Sikaflex. Um, I just put that tape down and it's good.